But one of the things that I failed to discuss previously is this cost of construction. One of the more underreported trends, I would say, uh, as of recent times, is the increase in cost of construction. Frankly, I only became aware of this trend uh, recently as well, so I can't be too judgmental about it. Off the bat, uh, home prices have seen the biggest jump since uh, 2017. Now, I made a recent video comparing the costs, or rather the market value of properties, detached properties, in 2017 versus August 2020 where we have the most recent stats so feel free to go watch that video along with other videos I've made regarding the home prices in Toronto in different ways right different categories condos homes semi-detached uh, different areas watch that as well but one of the things that I failed to discuss previously is this cost of construction. And I've been reading some articles and uh, latest studies regarding this cost of construction, which has increased most specifically the cost of lumber. Now here in Canada, and I feel confident saying in North America widely, maybe with the exception of Mexico, uh, most construction, most residential construction, that's not big structures, so condominiums and apartment buildings, and some low rises. But with the exception of those, most construction for residential purposes, semi-detached, detached, detached uh, townhomes, whatever it may be, they use a lot of wood. Now, this increase of lumber is due to uh, various different factors. It's never one variable that you're looking at or one factor. The main factor, as I have derived from all of my research, is the fact that due to the pandemic, sawmills were producing less and less due to the fact of the shutdown, and even when they're back up and running, they cannot produce at the same rate due to all the you know distancing restrictions. And I suspect, and I haven't read this as well, that this is only gonna get worse because of the wildfire fires we're seeing out west. Most of our wood, I would say, is imported from the Northwest in the United States of America. So Portland, the West Coast, Seattle. Obviously, I would be remiss to mention uh, British Columbia as well. We do not export all lumber and pine from the United States. We also produce some uh, ourselves as well. So it is a combination of the wildfires and I would say the COVID pandemic that has decreased uh, raw materials and at the same time decreased production, causing the prices of lumber to increase, making it costlier for home builders. These lumber costs uh, as I've read, can increase the cost of construction by added $8,000 to $10,000 for home builders. This, in effect, is represented in the inventory, where when you're trying to move inventory, the higher your marginal cost is, naturally you're inclined to increase the price and mark it up further. This in conjunction with the fact that there is a lot of buyer demand right now in the market. Once again, those will watch those videos with the exception of condominiums, which don't even apply to this. Uh, there is a lot of demand. Buyers want properties. Even if the affordability thing is an issue, they are venturing further, further east, west, north to get the affordability because proximity to work is no longer an issue. So in essence, it is this increase in price of lumber which affects home builders and it increases their costs, which naturally, once again, induces them to sell at a higher price and list at a higher price, which the market is ready and willing to accept because there exists a lot of demand and not enough inventory. That's one theory. There's other theories as to why, but regardless of what the reason is, the resultant effect is that there is a lot of demand and builders can get away from increasing the prices or rather get away with increasing the prices because the market is ready to accept that. Whether that's fortunate or unfortunate, I'm not saying this in a matter where I'm saying this is good or bad, these are just the facts. Let's look at this graph which uh, explicates exactly what I'm referring to right now. As you can see, when this pandemic became a serious issue, not when it started, but when it was spreading virally and a lot of governments were shutting down here in specific, March, it dips a bit. You see a slight dip in the curvature, but once June hits, prices somewhat skyrocket and then even out a bit. But still, as you can see from the trajectory of these lines, each line obviously um, designated for a different type of lumber and wood. 
prices right now as compared to when this graph starts are at all-time high for builders so why there's that initial dip in march uh i would have to do a little bit more of a research in order to answer that however right now off the bat my gut feeling is once the pandemic became an issue sawmills and uh, producers of lumber kind of decreased their prices for builders because they were also struggling themselves as well once the housing market kind of bounced back Combined with their own lack of production and their incapacity to produce as the same way in the same ways they were producing before, they naturally thought it was the best to increase prices. Now, in terms of my analysis of this, I think this explains part of the issue. And to say it's an issue, I don't mean that in a, a value a judgmental way. I mean in a value neutral way. When I say issue, I mean the topic of home prices. This only explains part of it because naturally, this only, in my opinion, applies to rebuilt homes, uh, new homes, not resale properties. This can't go to explain uh, the increase in prices of resale properties. This can only explain the increase in prices of newly built properties. Obviously, indirectly, they're connected with one another, but as some news outlets have used this to explain wholly the entire trend of increased prices uh, in the housing market in general, I think is a little bit misleading because this fact has explanatory power, but the explanatory power extends only so far as newly built properties and not resale properties, even though once again, you can argue it is indirectly connected. Anyways, that's Sam from Siberia Six Real Estate and Remax Realtor on Realtor Inc. As always, my contact information in the description box Feel free to comment, rate, and review and get in touch with me if you have any inquiries, questions, or concerns about real estate uh, generally. And yeah, subscribe if you like this video and uh, give me a thumbs up and follow. Thank you very much.